Okay. Well, good day to everyone and welcome. We are excited that you joined the COPC Service Journey Thinking, a critical CX strategy session. And it's great to have so many of you in attendance. Uh, we hope that you, are, that you and yours are safe and well. Uh, my name is James Camerari, Vice President of North, North American Sales at COPC, and I will serve as today's session host. I'd like to start by introducing my colleague and veteran COPC consultant that will be leading today's event, Rick Zayas, Vice President of CX Strategy and Performance Improvement. He brings almost 30 years of customer experience management on the client, outsource, and consultancy sides of the industry, and is also responsible for leading performance improvement consulting engagements, and for the delivery of many of our best practice training classes. Uh, we are both glad to be with you today. As some of you may already be familiar with COPC, I'll just take a quick moment to introduce our organization. We are a global consulting firm that's been around since the mid 90s, and we are relentlessly focused on creating meaningful customer experiences and optimizing business outcomes. And we do all this with a focus on performance improvement for operations that support the customer experience. We developed a performance management system and quality management framework known as the COPC Customer Experience Standard, to which many high performing organizations follow, are compliant with, or even become certified. COPC helps companies increase sales, improve customer satisfaction, and build brand loyalty by addressing root causes and customer issues and better managing complex service journeys, which we're gonna talk a little bit about today. Next slide. To support all of this, our solutions include customer experience strategy consulting, optimization consulting, and training, all based on the COPC CX standard. And an example of these directly related to today's service journey topic, you'll notice within the CX strategy section that we help our clients with designing their service journeys blueprinting already existing service journeys within the CX optimization section, and of course, training their teams to maintain these on their own through our service journey thinking training. Okay, a couple of quick housekeeping items during the session. All the attendees will be muted, but will be able to submit questions. You can see that little Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. Our agenda will include a 10 to 15 minute session after the presentation in which to field questions. So feel free to submit those questions as we go. And then we'll close it out with a short poll for feedback purposes, and that would be helpful to us, so please take a moment to respond. All right, with that said, I'd like to hand it off to Rick to get us started. Rick? Thank you, James. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to uh, be speaking with you today. Um, wherever you find yourself in the world, good day, good evening, and again, thanks for your time. Uh, we have a, a fairly important topic here, uh, when it comes to customer experience strategy that we want to introduce to you. Um, some of you may have um, heard about this before service journeys. You may have attended a previous webinar session or such, uh, but I'm going to take some time today to try to walk you through this concept and, and help you understand how it works and why it's important in a customer experience strategy. So again, pleasure to be with you here today. So let's begin. Um, many of you would actually be more familiar with the terms customer journey um, you may have had a customer journey mapping uh, exercise uh, completed uh, within your organization. Uh, could have been something that was done out of uh, operations or um, something that was done out of, uh, out of the marketing team or so. You know, we, see, we see either or, sometimes a combination of both participating, using an outside resource to help build these customer journey maps. So this may be a little more familiar to you when you hear uh, that term customer journey or customer journey map. And today we're going to help you distinguish that from what a service journey is. But a customer journey map, depending on who you're working with, uh, has a number of stages to it. I've gotten it down to uh, about four here today, but you might see five or six, depending how it's laid out with, uh, uh, with who you're working with. Um, but there's a, there's a stage at the beginning that has to do with the consumer becoming aware of a need or a desire, a want that they have um, in their lives, right? Business or personal lives and such. And that awareness can be created through various means. Uh, it may be, you know, intrinsically uh, created, a uh, very personal desire, but it may be motivated by outside influences and many times it is. Uh, those outside influences uh, can be friends, can be family, um, can be other acquaintances, can be colleagues, um, or can be, uh, it can be uh, influenced through advertisements, right? Through things that we see on television, or in the use of our phones and such, or um, out in public and such. 
um, but various advertisements, whether they be online or through television and such, and the speak that we pick up from social media or from those closer to us uh, from a work or personal perspective can influence those desires, right? So we get this desire that's born um, that we feel the need to fill at some point. Uh, the next stage here has to do with evaluation and comparison, where you begin to do a bit of research and try to identify what your options are out there, right? What are what are the, the various product, competitive products or services out there? What do they offer in terms of features, in terms of functionality, in terms of support? What are others saying about those products and services and how do they best fit with your particular needs and such? Again, your organization, your brand um, can influence this stage of the process significantly and should, right? You want your brand to stand out. You want consumers to understand why they should choose your service, your product and such. And then we move into the, um, the, this next stage here that I have on the screen, the acquisition and support stage. And some, some organizations might break this up, uh, but that decision to finally move forward with the purchase of your product and service and um, whether the, the financial component of that transaction is, is, is a one-time event where you, you acquire it and it's yours, or for services that are subscription in nature, it might, there may be ongoing fees and such. Uh, but there's a there's there's a process that's involved with acquiring the service or product and then if you have questions on using this product or if there's something not quite right with the product or not quite as you uh, expected it to be or maybe it's fine at the beginning but later on it begins to show signs of not being um, not meeting your expectations um, there, there will be support needs Some, sometimes there's support needs through the acquisition process sometimes there are support needs that come later in the life cycle of the use of this product or service. So that, that is another stage here. And then you have um, a usage and advocacy stage. And sometimes these work cyclically between the, that and the support piece as well. Well, this acquisition and support stage here is where we really wanna focus our attention today with this, with this concept that we're calling service journeys. So what is a service journey? Put very simply, um, a service journey is the acquisition and support part of the customer journey from the first interaction in that stage and uh, with your particular brand until we've achieved the resolution or the completion of that particular inquiry or again if it's an acquisition um, the, the acquisition of the of the product or service until we complete whatever that process is um, for which the customer interacted with your organization um, again it can be through digital means um, where the experience is uh, wholly maintained on you know a web or an interface through an app and such or it can be there can be some hu human interfaces as well um, again remotely or it could be live face-to-face -face type interactions depending on your product or service so the service journey is is focused on that acquisition and support um, aspect of the journey and actually I'm going to back up a little here these words, there's only one or two words in each one of these stages here, but there's a lot that happens in each stage, right? Um, and every, every stage is quite critically important to your relationship, your long-term relationship uh, with this client and in promoting additional customers or consumers to, to purchase your, your, your products and service and such. The period where they spend the most time with you uh, many times is this acquisition usage support stage those two stages there is where they spend the bulk of of their time with your product or your service and thus it becomes even more critical to make sure that that part of their journey is performing at a level that drives brand loyalty right that drives the business results you're seeking and the customer experience that you want tied to your brand so i've got another very simple example of a customer journey that i've pulled up here and one that might be familiar to your own experiences. Many, many of us have purchased things and had them shipped to the home, uh, various types of products, right? Consumer goods. So you, you may view an ad, um, an advertisement that kind of creates the thought for that need. And that could be through various channels, or you may have heard about it again from friends or colleagues and such. You may receive a promotional email to strengthen the desire for for that particular product or service. And once you've made the decision, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this again, as we spoke about on the previous page, uh, you're gonna go through these research, uh, this research exercise. Um, and, and again, various, various ways of influencing what you learn about the product and service. You then order the product, um, you receive that product, 
if, if there's something not quite right with that product, many of us have ordered things where what shows up is either missing parts or it's not quite the size we, we thought it would be or it just doesn't work the way it intended. Whatever that experience might be, you've now got to figure out how to get that resolved. And, um, and so you reach out, you may go to a website first to see, well, what are my options for, inter for, for getting support? Uh, you may see some frequently asked questions and then that's not useful enough. So you may go down the path of, may, may, there might be a chat function on that website um, and you may interact with either a, a bot or a live agent through that chat. It may lead to resolution, it may not. You may need to then make a phone call because you're just not getting uh, what you need to get your issue resolved with this product that, that showed up that is not meeting your expectations and such. And through those interactions, um, you finally get to the point where um, there's, there's a direction, there's a procedure to follow, there are steps to take that help you get the, the, not, uh, the not good product, the damaged product, if I can say it that way, back to them and get you um, the product that you need, right, with the, at the quality level that you desire and such. So again, there's a lot that happens in these, in these ovals, um, but what we're focused in on from a service journey perspective are these periods of time when you really um, are having some very critical interactions. The consumer's having critical interactions with your brand and um, uh, interactions that have a chance to reoccur over time as they use your product and service. So the service journey is focused on that acquisition and support stage, right? The, that, that stage in, their, in the consumer journey. Now, again, there's, there's a lot that occurs there. So we have, we have another diagram here that's a bit busier, but if I can just focus, you've got the same um, consumer or uh, customer journey uh, stages that are listed at the top there. If I could just focus us in on the acquisition and support uh, circle here, that part of the diagram, there's these terms there that are referred to as front stage and backstage, um, which is, these are, these are terms that are used when we're, when we're, when we're talking about service journeys. Um, the front stage uh, part of the, of the interaction of the process is where the consumers actually uh, visibly seeing and experiencing something, hopefully that you've intended. Sometimes there are unintentional components of that journey which don't go so well. Um, but whether those interactions again are through digital means or through a phone call um, or through a face-to-face -face interaction, these things are referred to to the front stage because the co the consumer is experiencing them directly. They're very visible to the consumer. They do um, influence their perspective, their sentiment with your brand. Um, we all know that what happens on the front stage is supported by many things that happen behind the scenes, right? And so this, there's this term called backstage, which speaks to sometimes the layers of, of, of processes that are taking place behind the scenes and activities that help support what's going on in the front stage where the customer is having those direct interactions. And they're just as critically important, and we need to understand those. So again, when we focus on the service journey, we're, we're understanding this very significant piece of the consumer's journey, which again, can last for the life of your product or service. And we're going deeper, we're going significantly deeper and getting much more comprehensive and understanding the underlying layers that produce the consumer's experience and help you achieve the business results that you were seeking. Um, in order to do that deep dive, we use something called service journey blueprinting or service blueprinting. And it kind of looks like this. Uh, I have um, uh, a little bit more real example that follows this, but I wanted you to, again, to see these layers. There's the customer journey layer, which is the steps, and this is what drives the building of this blueprint. The steps, the tasks, the activities that the customer performs to try to either acquire your product or service or get support for the use of your product or service. Um, so those are laid out on the, on the, the, the top layer. Then we begin to lay out all of the front stage interactions that occur. Again, some of those through human means, some of those through digital means. Um, behind those, what goes on in backstage um, activities, and then even deeper layers that we're calling here support processes and such. There are linkages that cross various lanes here, you might say, these layers, and influence the customer experience, influence the business outcomes. So it's important to to go through this type of exercise with your key products, with your, with, your, with your key products and services out there and the service journeys, the most common service journeys that consumers are gonna take when they interact with your organization, again, in the acquisition or in the support of 
your product or, or, or tool. Um, those linkages are uh, significantly important and they begin to pop out. They begin to come to light when you build out this type of blueprint. A lot of organizations um, have gone through a, a customer journey mapping exercise, right? So they get that top layer done. And um, probably not enough organizations do that, to be honest. I think more should. And that, that's definitely something that COPC works with organizations on. We even have a, a, a training class that we can give you so you learn how to do this yourself. Um, many more organizations, I would say, do kind of internal process flow mapping. Um, very few will ever do something like this, the blueprint, which really brings it all together. And um, I can't emphasize enough how important it is because both worlds don't exist on their own. The customer journey is completely influenced by what goes on in these other layers. And what happens in the front stage is completely influenced by these customer interactions coming, uh, you know, coming to it, as well as the backstage and support processes that are helping that front stage you know, be successful or be, be uh, inhibited from, from achieving success and such. So, so it's important to actually have this bigger picture so you can find those linkages, see where they're right, see where they're weak, see where you have dependencies that you didn't understand before, see where you have steps that are not contributing value to the customer. Um, when we work with clients and we do um, a blueprinting type of, of exercise or project with them and we've identified a key product and one of the, the, the most important maybe service journey that their customers have, we'll create something like this. And this is just a snippet of the beginning of, of one of those uh, real blueprinting efforts. And you can see um, kind of the level of detail that's involved with capturing um, the customer experience and you need, you need customer sentiment data, customer perspective, customer feedback to do that. Again, it's something else that um, hopefully your organization already has that type of data available. If they don't, we can work with you on getting that customer perspective, but we need that customer perspective because that's what drives what we do next, right? We build a blueprint based on the customer's experience first, based on every action that they take in each one of their interactions with your brand. And then we build uh, the ensuing layers that come next. And it's quite revealing to have um, members of your team together. Uh, and all of this obviously in today's uh, pandemic environment can be done remotely. Um, but it's quite revealing to have members of your team that um, have the, they, they work in the front stage aspect of this, right? They interact with customers or they, they are responsible for the digital interfaces that provide those experiences. Uh, to have those people in the same room to have your backstage representatives, the ones that are doing the important things behind the scenes and support processes represented in the room, um, even, if, even if it is a virtual room, looking at the customer perspective, looking at the customer data and walking through and building these together, um, just the process of building one of these blueprints together uh, leads to significant aha moments um, that are quite revealing of where the, the business could do so much better at improving this journey. So um, that, that gets to kind of the next point here. You get a ton out of, of going through this exercise of building these blueprints, of analyzing your service journeys in a comprehensive manner. Just the exercise of doing that is gonna be quite revealing to your group, right? You, you will see, uh, again, these linkages, you will see the number of steps, even sometimes what you believe to be the simplest of service journeys, when you build it out, you become quite alarmed at how complex it really can be and, and how um, burdensome you've made it for the consumer, right? And our goal here is to reduce effort. If you, if you joined our, our previous webinar uh, on this topic back in June, we put some data in front of you in terms of research we've done, and, and you can find similar research with other organizations that supports um, how customer effort, the more effort the customer has to go through to use your product or to, to get support for your product, um, the more likely their satisfaction with your brand is going to take a, a negative impact. Um, it is important to them for things to work and be as simple and as effortless as possible. And the more effort they're having to expend, there's likely a reciprocal effort that your business, whether through digital or human means, is needing to put forth as well. So this is costing you um, on top of the fact that you've got a, uh, an experience that is dissatisfying for the customer, you are also creating more expense inefficiencies, more cost to your organization, and eating away at the profitability for that service or product 
um, when you were when you were trying to figure out how much it would cost to support and such, right? So so understanding the again these linkages, seeing how many times the the lanes the the layers are crossed in this blueprint, seeing how many touch points there are, just building this blueprint is going to be quite revealing. We take another step on top of that that we call marking the journey, and that is to identify where where specific opportunities. Um, exist and try to help define those, do some research behind that to get data to support these. So just to keep things simple, here's an example of what we're talking about. You, you build the blueprint, um, as you saw, a very simple start of one. Um, that Again, that example wasn't complete yet. Um, you build the start of one. And, and when you're, again, you've got all these amazing revelations that come from building that blueprint. Um, it's, it's good to then define what these, each of these uh, opportunities or gaps may be in there. So you can use some icons with some definitions that work for your organization, for your goals. But the examples here are you may use um, an icon to represent uh, pain points, things that are causing either your customer more effort or um, leading to lower resolution. Again, because the goal here is to, to reduce the amount of effort the consumer has to go through while they're trying to achieve resolution to their particular inquiry um, or need um, in support of your product or service. We can identify where the places where, where the process is working right, where the journey is, is, is doing really well, and we wanna make sure we protect that aspect of it because it's good for the customer, it's good for the business, right? We can identify opportunities where waste exists, where we have activities or steps in this journey, tasks in this journey that are not generating customer value, you know, and that, in that simple example I gave earlier where um, someone ordered a product, it arrived at their home, they find out something's not quite right with their product, they go out and search on the web to try to get help, they end up going through a chat function, they end up getting to a phone call. They're, they're, if, if I just pick on one piece of that, the fact that they did, they had the chat conversation but didn't achieve resolution, there's there's business time and expense tied to that, right? Uh, many organizations have invested in, in, in digital uh, chat type uh, interfaces. There, there's, there's an investment there that's not generating the intended result, right? There's cost there. It's not contributing to any value to the customer. And then there's the agent who's supporting that, the live agent that's supporting that possibly when it, when it uh, escalates to a live human who uh, possibly is not able to achieve resolution on their own and so it needs to go to someone who can actually talk through this. So that, that's a significant business expense as well. And if it's not contributing value, then you want to identify that. Um, you could have opportunities identified where you're not quite leveraging the moment that's that, 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 that you have with the consumer to uh, promote more of your features or services or promote uh, a deeper loyalty or promote um, some sort of add-on that's going to help them um, increase kind of the stickiness with your brand and stay on longer, right? So those chances we get to increase revenue, um, increase our, our profitability, we want to be able to identify in the journey as well. So you would take these things and you would overlay them on your blueprint and you would have um, some sort of data below that supports um, the significance of these moments as well. How much is this costing you? Or if it's a, a, a chance to improve your financials from a uh, a cross sale or so. What, what what's the opportunity on the table? You know, what do we believe we could attain from additional sales if we if we do something different with the design of this of this service journey? Um, so it might look something like this, but with a lot of supporting data. Again, these are simplified examples, um, and it'll help guide your organization to setting proper priorities in your in your world for how you invest in the service journey, how you invest in improving the consumer experience, how you invest in helping your organization achieve your desired business outcomes. So um, if you haven't picked up already, uh, the importance of service journey thinking. Service journey thinking um, is COPC's comprehensive approach for improving the customer experience, but not just from the customer's perspective, but by also looking at the layers of, of activities, of technology, of processes, of whatever it is that help create that journey, that help create that experience tied to your brand. Um, this comprehensive approach, what we have seen in working with clients, is a much better approach than using uh, what we call touch point um, uh, reviews and touch point indicators, where you're only capturing kind of a vertical, kind of a piece 
of that journey along the way and not really seeing what's happening holistically. Uh, service journey do a better job of, of predicting those outcomes, of helping you achieve your business goals and higher customer satisfaction. And really uh, uh, knowing your service journeys and having that information available to you um, is what we would say is mo most critical for you to make the proper decisions on how you prioritize your investments for you know, further improvements in your product design, service experience, support experience, um, and business goals that you're, that, you're, that you're targeting and such. So service journey thinking is critical to that decision-making process, critical to prioritizing your business investments, and again, promoting the right experience for your brand and such. So that leads us to um, um, a number of questions that I wanna leave you with today. Um, and again, if you joined previously, you're going you're to see these again, uh, but they're quite important for you to understand as you think about your, your services, your products, the brand experience you're trying to promote, and the business outcomes that you're trying to achieve. So the first two kind of pop up together, and that is, do you even know your service journeys? Do you know, um, how much do you know about um, your consumers' interactions with your brand? How much do you know about that digital experience? How much do you know about that human experience? Um, how much do you know about how many times it changes hands, which channels are used, which channels are more successful than others? H how much do you know about those common interactions and maybe less common but still critical interactions that they have with your brand? And if you don't know enough, what's keeping you from getting that? Uh, these are critical questions for someone who's responsible for customer experience in their organization, right? You, you, you've got to know these things. You need to know what these service journey are. What are my most common service journeys? What are the most critical ones? How do I get the information I need to understand the consumer's experience? How do I get the information to understand what's helping produce that experience and the results I need from a business perspective? Do you, do you measure service journeys? We see a lot of organizations that measure, again, these touch points along the way. This one interaction I may have had with an app or with your website or so, this one interaction I may have had um, in a chat experience or in a phone call and such, we see you know, organizations commonly measuring those touch points. But has anyone kind of stepped back or is there any way that your organization is evaluating how the consumer feels across the entire journey? That's a little less common from what we see out there, but yet it's critically important because the consumer is evaluating you based on the, the, the totality of those experiences and not just one of those uh, interactions along the way. So it's, un, it's, it's important to understand how to measure that and to get that data in your hands. Um, is the design of your organization, which traditionally is vertical in nature, right? It's functional in nature. Is that helping you or is that working against you as you try to support the proper brand experience and the proper business results coming out of your service journeys? So do you have anyone who's responsible for that customer view, right? That customer uh, uh, viewpoint from how it, what it feels like to interact with your organization across their entire experience. So that, does that person even have, do they exist? Do they have the authority? Um, do they have uh, the, the resources they need to influence the design of your services, to influence the design of your products, to influence the design of the support experiences in such a way, again, that helps you achieve what you're looking for from a, a consumer experience and your business results and such. Once you've learned all of this uh, information and where your opportunities lie, taking those steps to reduce the customer effort. Because again, our goal here is to shorten the durations of these journeys, right? And help them achieve uh, as much as possible resolution, uh, obviously in the consumer's eyes and for your business as well. So. Um, what steps can you take to try to reduce that effort? And finally, how do you reduce the effort for your business as well? How do you help your business become more efficient, lower its costs, promote other revenue opportunities, get these consumers to talk more about their experiences with you with others so that you grow your consumer base, you get more profitable um, uh, you know, consumer experiences and such because they are more efficient and getting to resolution quicker. Right? How, do, how do we get that done? Um, and that takes foresight, that takes, that takes strategic thinking, that takes planning, and it takes the right knowledge and skills, the right partners to help you get there. Otherwise, you see this word there in that last question, unintended. We see quite 
a bit of unintended components of or experiences within a journey. And, and, and a lot of that has to do with just not being aware, just not knowing, um, you know, what they need to know, what you need to know, sorry, about, about the service journey, right. And its totality and its comprehensive nature and how, um, the various front stage backstage processes all support, um, that consumer experience and your, your outcomes and such. So, um, with that, I want to be, I want to tell you, Hey, we are, um, obviously we've got a team full of consultants that are, uh, experienced in CX. This is what we do. We focus on the consumer experience, um, and we can help you conduct operational assessments to understand front stage, backstage support process layers and what's contributing to your success or not where your opportunities lie. We can help you do the research on the consumer side of things. If you're, if you're short on the data you need on the consumer experience, we can, we, we can help you with that. We can work with you on a blueprinting exercise um, and uh, teach you how to do this yourself because this is an intense exercise, but quite valuable. The ROI is quite significant. We are, you know, we, we're working with other organizations and even though this takes time, what, what they're getting in return in terms of um, cost savings, improved customer experience, um, and, you know, improve ability, you know, profitability and such is, is much more significant than the time invested in it. So we can teach you how to do this. We can work with you on your first one or two, and then you can, you know, carry forward and we'll be there to support you and back you up whenever needed. And obviously through that blueprinting uh, exercise, we'd be glad to work with you on also transforming that consumer experience, transforming your front stage and backstage processes to produce the results that you so desire. Um, so with that said, that's it for, uh, for our session today in terms of what I wanted to share with you on what is a service journey, what is service journey thinking, and how important this is for your uh, CX strategy in your organization. James? Thanks, Rick. Uh, really nice job. Um, as mentioned earlier, we've got uh, about 10 or 15 minutes for any questions. Uh, we've had uh, a few that have come in already into our queue. Uh, feel free to continue to submit as you might hear other questions might spawn a question for you. So we're free to submit. We'll continue to take as many as we can. Uh, first question for you, Rick. Uh, how long does a service, how long does a blueprint exercise typically take? And should I plan for a couple of hours, a half day, or several days? Uh, great, great question. And um, the first answer is it depends. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so it depends on a number of things, but I'll start with approach first. Um, um, obviously, uh, you know, you would, you would sit down, you would identify, you know, what, what's the service or, what, or product that I, that I want to um, focus these efforts on and which service journey, which, which interaction experience do I want to, to blueprint out? But once you've identified that, you've got a couple of approaches um, you can take. You can, you can pull in the resources and the data you need and get everyone together and hunker down over, let's say, like a, a week long, you're locked up in a room, whether that's a virtual room or, or, or physically, uh, depending on where you are in the world and, and your freedoms to do so. Um, uh, but you hunker down for a week and you have all the right players in the room and you, you build this thing out. You, you may be able to um, build this blueprint within a week with, with the right resources in the room or the right knowledge experts in the room about each of those layers and such. Okay. Um, and not saying that everyone needs to stay along the way. There's going to be a core team, but you may need to pull in others who are knowledgeable about certain parts of that journey. Right. So there, that's one way we've seen it done where you knock it out in one week. There is some work that's done before to get the right players to get the right data you're going to need to understand the customer perspective and such. So there's definitely some work that's done before, but you, you could lock yourselves in for a week and try to get this done depending on um, the complexity of the journey. The, the other approach we've seen is because not everyone can lock folks down for a week like that is you extend it over a period of, of months from a duration, but not from a time dedication, right? Where you get a, you get a team together that, that works on this for, two to three hours every other week or so. It depends. It depends where you are from an urgency perspective, right? If you've really got some, some bad consumer uh, feedback and sentiment coming through, you're going to want to use the more intense, let's get this done in a week um, ish uh, type time frame perspective. If, if the sky's not quite falling, uh, but you know, you have opportunities to get better, then you can take the more extended approach where you kind of lay that out and over a two to three month period with several meetings where 
you do some blueprinting work, you go back and do more research in between meetings, you come back and, and continue to enrich the blueprint with the information and the research you're doing in between, the analysis you're doing in between, you can come up with a very valuable blueprint in that two or three month time frame uh, by having your meetings kind of segment in that way with some work that's done in between to provide the data information you need. I hope that helps. Great, thank you, Rick. Uh, here's another. Uh, what happens in organizations which do not own the full service yet? Um, that's a great question as well. We 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 do experience that. We we work. Um, you might be um, you might be a, an outsourced service provider who only controls a segment of that entire service journey, or even when you're not outsourced and it's an internal operation um, providing a component right of that journey. Uh, you may not have the, the ability to control things that happen before that influence that journey or things that come after may be handled by another department and such. Um, so when that occurs, what we say is, hey, as, as much as possible, try to do your best to still map out the entire journey. And those things that you're not able to control, um, gather some data and share the impact of those things with those who do have the control and can influence the design of that aspect of the process. So uh, we don't want you to ignore it because at the end of the day, from your consumer's perspective, they don't know the internal divisions that exists from, again, whether it's handled internally or there's an outsource component of it. But, um, and so that's influencing your brand uh, and your brand image. Um, but do the homework anyway, include it in your analysis as much as you can gather information on those components you don't control and feed that back to those who can control with with some data that really helps them understand the impact of that as much as you can tie it back to uh, consumer sentiment uh, measures or tie it back to financial results for the business, that's gonna, that's gonna raise their, you know, get their attention a lot more and hopefully get them to work with you on, on trying to improve that, that journey. Great. Um, when you talk about reducing customer effort and support journeys, how are you typically quantifying this as a metric? That being customer effort. Um, read it one more time for me, James. Uh, when you talk about reducing customer effort in support journeys, how are you typically quantifying this as a metric? I think they're asking, how do we, yeah. me how do we measure customer effort? So there, there could be a, a, a two or three uh, things to that. So. Um, there are, um, there is something called the customer effort score out there. So there, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a metric that has a seven point scale to it. Um, you, you're going to want to be on the, on the, the low effort side of it. Right. Um, so there's a customer effort score on there. You can do some research. We can help you with that. Um, but there's a way to survey, to ask a question in a certain way uh, that basically says something along the lines of, Hey, um, how, how easy was it for you to, and then whatever the remainder of that question should be, depending on your product, your service, and the support experience. So you can, you can measure that way, um, uh, and you might want to measure at multiple points during the service journey. Actually, we would recommend that you do that, because what appears to be going fine at the beginning um, could have points along the way that are not going so well, and so you're going to want to understand the sentiment along the way, um, as well as at the end. It also depends on how quick your service journeys occur. Some, some service journeys occur over a shorter period of time. Some of them take hours, days, weeks, some even months. So it depends on, again, on your product or service. So using a, a customer effort measure is, is a really smart thing, customer effort score. Um, beyond that, you are, when you go through the blueprinting exercise, which you should do anyway, right, for your key products or services, you're going to, one of the first things you're going to notice is, wow, we've really made this complicated and it really shouldn't be. So you have a metric from a sentiment perspective because it's really the customer's emotions coming through that customer effort score. So you're going to get an emotional measure, but then you're also going to get something that's quite factual when you blueprint um, this journey where you can see what you're putting them through and you can count, gee, I thought this process should only take three or four steps. It actually, and this is not shocking, takes something closer to 20. Folks don't understand that until you actually pull these, this information together and you are able to visually see all the steps in that process. So you will, in a, in a much more black and white way, be able to see how much effort you've created on top of the emotional measure that comes through the customer effort score. 
Great, thank you, Rick. I think we, I think we answered that for her. Um, is there any difference in customer expectations by region? Um, the quick answer to that is, is, is yes. Um, uh, therefore, what works in uh, COPCs, as James mentioned, is a global organization. We work with clients in, in every region of the world. Um, and clearly, um, what consumers' ex expectations are, depending on product, depending on region, um, and depending on what they, they expect to get from a support experience as well, those are all different. Um, they can be very different. And so that, that does need to be taken into account. If you, are a, if you have a product that you know, sells globally, um, what your journey should look like, how you design that, the things you need to think about from a service design perspective, um, have to take uh, kind of regional cultural influences into account because you will not use a cookie cutter approach along the way. And again, we can help you with that because we have that, that internal knowledge from region to region, from country to country of how we might want to design the experience a little different depending on the culture or region uh, country that we're focused on. Okay, great. I think we have time for one more. Um, okay. A quick poll. Uh, what's the best way, this is very similar to the other one, but what's the best way to measure a customer, satis a customer satisfaction with their service journey? Okay. Um, actually, uh, really good question. And I'm, I'm gonna, I don't think you can get enough consumer feedback. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put three out there. All right. Um, um, I don't want you to not have your uh, transactional measures, your, your, the, the interaction, like how you felt about this moment, this particular interaction, you still need to measure that. Uh, and typically we would work with organizations to use something that um, you might, a, a normal customer satisfaction survey, sometimes we just call it simply CSAT. Uh, so, so something with a five point scale or you ask them about that particular experience, you should still do that and you should still measure that along the way because it's going to, you, typically you can ask a few questions about attributes of that moment that, that are tougher to ask when, you, when you're trying to talk about the entire experience the, across the entire journey. So you might be able to get some more rich data about the components of that journey that'll help you do more analysis and know where you have opportunities for improve. So you still want to do that. Um, you would definitely want a customer effort type score and um, depending on your product or service, that may be something that applies to the entire journey or it may apply to certain parts of your journey as well. So again, that's just gonna, it's gonna be unique to your product and service and how long it takes for that journey to happen. We work with clients who the service they provide is something that, that takes months uh, for it to go from beginning to end. And so um, I would say one customer effort measure at the end wouldn't be good enough. There are definitely phases of that experience where we need to measure effort along the way. So, um, so keep that in mind. And then your, um, the quite popular MPS score, I think is a great measure to, to use as an overall, um, something that you might do um, you know, once or twice a year if you have a, a steady consumer base. If your type of product is I'm in and out and, and, and I don't continue to have experiences, um, then, then I would say effort and, and your CSAT measures are probably more appropriate. But an MPS measure, um, and how they feel about their, their overall uh, uh, experience and their relationship with you. And if they were, you know, recommend you uh, to others, I think is a good kind of overall measure on what they feel about your brand. So I would tell you, use all three if you can, um, because uh, you can get rich uh, customer perspective information off of that. Uh, I guess I would throw out one more. We obviously also live in a, in a very digital advancing world. Um, so there are tools out there that can also evaluate uh, the consumer's uh, experience, um, you know, by, by their expressions, by their emotions, whether they be written or verbal and such. Um, so there's, there's other ways of also gathering customer sentiment that I think are just as important. You, you can never learn enough about what your consumers feel about your brand and your brand experience. 